Here's why the finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm was amazing. Pretty, 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 why? pretty good. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Mike here. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up and comment when you are watching this video. That would be fantastic. It really helps me grow. My videos have been doing really well. I've been really happy. So please make sure you do all of that stuff. And if you like this video, check out one of my other videos. If you, if you like this, I know you're going to like the others. So anyway, let's get into it. So Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is Larry David's sitcom, wrapped up earlier this year. And I gotta say, I was really, really happy with the direction the finale went. And I feel like what it does is it kind of wraps up a very common complaint in the world of popular culture that has been going for probably about 25 years now. If you are not familiar, the lowdown on Larry David is that he was the co-creator of Seinfeld with Jerry Seinfeld, of course, and the character of George Costanza was based on him. Why must I always be the focal point of attention? Let me just be, let me live. So all of the weird and wacky stuff that George does in that show is basically based on Larry David's real life experiences. Now, Larry David left Seinfeld towards its later years, but did return for the finale. And that is uh, an important detail here. But after Seinfeld, he created a new show called Curb Your Enthusiasm, basically starring himself and a bunch of his friends and just creating drama around, I guess, the day-to-day -day nothingness of life, similar to what Seinfeld was. And what I always really respected over the years about Larry David was his willingness to kind of push boundaries, to say things and do things on his show that might be a little bit edgy and push boundaries a little bit, maybe risk getting a bit of public backlash for some of the stuff that he did. It never felt like he was afraid to just kind of call out bullshit where he saw it. And that's kind of the premise of the entire show. It is always very fun and funny to watch Larry David kind of entrap himself in a rigmarole of social faux pas. Sit in the middle for Why don't you move over one? You can up. Okay, or whatever you're saying. Now, going back to the Seinfeld finale, which aired in the late 90s and was one of the most watched TV finales of all time, a lot of people claim that it is one of the worst sitcom endings of all time. And I feel like the sitcom finale is a really hard thing to get right. And I might actually do another video on that. But I think it comes down to the fact that you're kind of at odds with giving the audience pretty much exactly what they want or doing something that they wouldn't really expect. And so you've got finales like Friends, which do just kind of resolve the will they or won't they of Ross and Rachel. I got off the plane. And then you've got hated finales like How I Met Your Mother, where the long awaited story ends with the mother's death. Come on, dad. Mom's been gone for six years now. It's time. Should have put a spoiler warning there, but it's been 10 years, so get over it. Side note, I actually think the How I Met Your Mother finale is really, really good, and I'll probably do a video about that at some point. Seinfeld also falls into the bad category to a lot of people because it kind of was just a little bit weird. Personally, I quite like it as well because I feel like what it was trying to do was celebrate the legacy of the show and all of the kind of one-off characters that became so a part of the show over the years. It essentially sees Jerry and his friends facing prison time because of a crime they committed without knowing it was a crime. And all of these recurring or one-off characters from over the years of the show return to basically condemn Jerry and his friends for all of their misgivings. And the show literally just ends with them all being sent to prison for a year. It is really, really shocking. And I think a lot of people just didn't like that ending. They didn't like knowing that the characters were in prison for a year. Fast forward to 2024 and Larry David is writing the finale to Curb Your Enthusiasm and he decides he's going to basically mirror the complete Seinfeld finale. And that's what this finale is. Basically, he does the Seinfeld finale again. And Larry David has always maintained that he thought the Seinfeld finale was great and didn't understand why people hated it so much, which kind of explains his actions here. Hey man, I've been to all those Seinfeld episodes. Oh yeah? All I got left is a fucking finale. Wow. Although, I heard some terrible things about it. I heard you fucked it up. 
He brings back a slew of one-off and recurring characters from across the nearly 20-year run of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and they condemn him, and he's accused of a crime that he didn't know was a crime, and he risks prison. He burned my beans! I didn't burn your beans! You burned my beans! Joey Funkhauser started that fire with his big new penis! Him committing the crime of giving someone a bottle of water while they're in line to vote, which is apparently a crime in whatever city he was in, happens very early on in the season. I think it's the first episode of the season. So if you are familiar with the Seinfeld finale, you do kind of see where this is going. Alongside a lot of the characters in the last season asking Larry about the Seinfeld finale, you start to put the pieces together and see exactly where this is going, but it still delivers. And it's great to see Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld side by side again, having some banter. It, it was really great to see them together. The episode ends and the series ends with Larry David being found guilty and being sent to prison for a year. But here's where it all kind of wraps up because he does one thing different that he didn't do in the Seinfeld finale. Basically, due to a loophole and some juror misconduct in the trial, Jerry Seinfeld comes in to let him know that he's not going to prison after all and the conviction was quashed. It's over. It's over. You're a free man. They both walk out smiling and laughing together and Larry David says, This is how we should have ended the finale. Oh my God, you're right. And you know what? I kind of agree with him because that kind of gives you all the drama and the fun, but then undoes it. So you don't have to think about Jerry and his friends being in prison for a whole year. I think this is so clever from Larry David to not just double down on the fact that he thought it was a good finale, but also to, I guess, rectify what everyone thought was bad about the finale. And it's very nonchalant and not a big deal is made out of it all, which is very on brand with the Seinfeld David style of comedy. And I feel like as well, by doing the finale like this, it really bookends Larry David's kind of TV career, which I guess started with Seinfeld and ends with Curb Your Enthusiasm. As well as bookending this long running partnership between what a lot of people consider two of the greatest minds in comedy ever. The show is about nothing. And it is funny because Jerry Seinfeld in real life was alluding to something about the Seinfeld finale happening in the future. And it is pretty evident that this is what he was referring to, which means that Larry David has probably had this idea in mind for a very long time. And I think to him, it's almost like a vendetta against the people that said the finale was bad. He literally, as I said, just doubled down and did it again. Overall, I'm really going to miss Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think it was one of the greatest shows on television and particularly the last few seasons were fantastic. And I think we really need comedians and writers like Larry David who will kind of push boundaries a little bit and not keep everything safe because I guess someone like Larry David doesn't really have much to lose. Like he's very wealthy, he's very famous. He probably doesn't care very much if he gets canceled in inverted commas. And I think that's a really important person to have in in the industry uh, to keep pushing boundaries. That's not to say I think that being outrageous and offensive is inherently funny, but I do think it's important that people keep pushing those edges a little bit. And Curb was definitely a show on television that wasn't afraid to do that. But congrats to Larry David and an amazing book ending of his career is why the Curb finale was perfect. Thank you for watching. What did you think of the Curb finale? Let me know down in the comments. Subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, you will like my other videos. I guarantee you. Uh, I've been doing videos for a while, but they're really picking up now, which is awesome. I'd also love you to support me on Patreon. If you like my videos, it just helps bring some money in so I can pay for like new microphone leads and all this stuff that, are, that breaks around here that I need to replace. Uh, thanks to all my Patreons so far. I don't know what side they're going to be on. They might be on that side. They might be on that side. As well as that, you can listen to my podcast. I just do takes on pop culture and a bunch of other stuff there's a movie club feed on that podcast feed 20th century boy wherever you listen to your podcast apple spotify it might not even be here it could be there i don't know um, and then uh you can watch full videos of it on this channel as well subscribe i'd love to have you on board and i'll see you in another video my name is radio mike this has been the inside of my mind catch you later